God wanted the dark and light. God wanted. And what's happening here? I don't know if you've noticed this before, but there are three parables. There's the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And the first one Jesus tells, the lost sheep, is telling one for the lads. I'll come back to that later. Because that's going to be important. He'll tell one for the girls, a very similar effect next, something the Pharisees and teachers of the law will be thoroughly roiled by. But first Jesus had a story about despicable shepherds to make his point. Because shepherds, in, in their view, were dirty people, contaminated by the work they did, and ritually unclean. So Jesus praises up this ritually unclean, unacceptable person to them. Let's give you a lesson using those you find unacceptably beneath you, says Jesus. It's a common, lowly scenario that Jesus' more socially unacceptable followers will identify with, but that his more religiously stuck-up ones will despise. Here's this despised shepherd in Israel. He's nonetheless a man of means, or he works for a man of means, because a hundred sheep is quite a lot in that time. They reckon these days you need 1,500 sheep per man to make a living. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, <clears> 100 <throat> sheep was quite a lot in those days. But he's a diligent, he's a careful shepherd because although he has 99 other sheep, he nevertheless leaves the 99 in the middle of his working day out in open country rather than going away from that one lost sheep and, and taking those lot and putting them in the fold of the night watchman before being out to search. He goes straight away and he searches for that one lost sheep. He's serious, he's urgent about caring for the whole flock because it is the isolated sheep that is most vulnerable. And he leaves the big group together because they ought to be safer than the isolated individual sheep. He notices that a sheep lost, and off he goes to search for that lost sheep. Just a quick look in case you can see it. No. He goes after that awkward, annoying sheep until he finds that awkward, annoying sheep. And he pointedly brings that awkward, annoying sheep back into the nice 99 who are behaving nicely and, and, and doing the right things. Being like sheep. And finding that one lost sheep fills the shepherd with joy. Mad joy. When he finds it, joyfully puts it on his shoulders. Verse 6, he goes home. Then he calls his friends and his neighbours together and he says, Rejoice with me, I've found my lost sheep. And everybody else will be saying, that's why I'm taking them out on Monday, going to call that thing. That's good in the curry. <laughs> Nuisance. Why is it mad joy? Well, it's mad for a number of reasons. What does he do with the sheep when he finds it? He sticks it on his shoulders. Have you ever carried a sheep on your shoulders? Uh, a small one. You shift sheep in a trailer, don't you, Callum? Yeah, it's easier. Yeah. You don't stick them on your shoulders. Smelly, tick-ridden, dirty things on his shoulders. What's more, it doesn't say lamb. We've all carried lambs back. It doesn't say that. It says sheep. Sheep. Lost sheep. Wayward sheep. Off the hymn sheep, sheep, because sheep are supposed to flock. It's what they do, it's how they stay safe. So this one has a most unworthy, self-destructive streak. It's gone off on its own in the wilderness. And instead of making it walk home, which is, why wouldn't it walk home? Why shouldn't he walk it home? Instead of that, he lifts that sheep onto his shoulders in the heat of the day, because in the cool of the day, the evening, the night, the early morning, they'd be back in the sheepfold, and he carries it back home, doing all the work himself for this sheep that doesn't deserve it. Mad joy. Mad grace. And then he throws a party for all his friends and neighbours because of the lost sheep that he's found and graciously brought home to the fold. Shouldn't God be glad about the unworthy people that God, Jesus has got with him? Of course he should. It's the glory of God that he's got unworthy people with him. Of course he should. So Jesus puts the lesson to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And here comes that lesson. Here's the lesson. For everyone who objects to following Jesus on account of the motley crew the Lord's got with him, heaven delights to see motley in the makeup of the church. I tell you, in the same way, there'll be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who don't need to repent. 
and he delights to see Motley in the makeup of the church, which is why he delights in you if you're prepared to acknowledge Jesus wants Motley and repent of your own sins and inadequacies of yourself and be part of the Motley Bunch. See, if this is your objection to following Jesus, Jesus is clearly in no mind to appease you. Because God's grace is glorious when he plainly does motley budge. Jesus only deals with sinners who will be saved. Who will be saved. The one, these are the ones who heaven rejoices over, not the 99 who consider that they are righteous and therefore don't see any need to repent. I'm not wrong. Arrogance is a very, very life-sucking sin, isn't it? Okay, well Jesus has illustrated his point for the lads, and now he seems to turn to making the same point in a way designed to appeal to his lady followers. Now that, that is going to get straight up pharisaical noses. God wanted the dark and light. God wanted the earth and ocean stars and